What's going on everybody? It's your boy Long Island Fish Guy here. And today I, I planned on doing a video for the 125. Um, showing you this update of the tank. Uh, but rather than doing that, I'm just going to give you guys an update on all three tanks. Yes, three tanks. I know I only really cover two on YouTube. Um, but I do have three tanks down here. So let's just get started on the tank that nobody really sees. And that is my 10 gallon quarantine slash hospital slash whatever you want to call it tank. Um, just to give you a little overview on this, if you follow the channel uh, and you saw, if you've been watching from the beginning, um, I've always had little quarries. Um, but as the cichlids grew in the 125, I removed them. I have three quarries in here. Um, and they, they've been with me for a while. They, they keep my cycle going in this tank and they always are here. It's good because any fish that really goes in here can't really eat them. They don't really require that much food. They don't make that much waste. It's a very low maintenance tank. Um, I've actually had the idea, well, I should probably give you a little overview on this tank since I never really cover it. Um, by the way, I know this is a very ugly tank. My dad always says that this is, I need to like break this tank down and just get rid of it because it looks so gross. Um, but rather than break it down, um, I really think I'm just gonna put some, some TLC into it. Um, this tank I was actually given to me from my girlfriend's dad. Uh, I have like the lowest end Aquion top on here. It's so bad that I actually have a, uh, let's see if I can lift this up here. Only one of the lights work on it. And it's actually like a halogen bulb, which actually looks like it's gonna break. This side's just completely broken. Um, I tried fixing it. But it honestly isn't worth it. I think I might just get like a glass canopy and then get like another light, like a fluorescent or an LED to put on top. Just so I can get, this light doesn't look bad. I might, throw, I'm definitely going to be throwing a background on here rather than just getting rid of the tank. I need it. I need this. It's a necessity, especially since the ick outbreak in the 125. Um, before, I don't want to make this, this is a 10 minute video, so I'm going to make this quick. So these guppies I actually just got. I have two males and one female. I'm trying to get them to breed. Uh, I, I actually bought those females pregnant already. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, I have a little breeder box that it's not set up yet. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, I really just want them to breed. And then I'll use them into the 125 as, as some food for the cichlids. Just because I really don't trust the, you know, the goldfish or the... the feeder fish that you get because actually my 125 has never had any live feedings but that's it for this tank i'm going to start doing updates on the 10 gallon as well um one of my uh subscribers is going to be hooking me up soon so this is going to be big there's some big stuff coming in one of my subscribers if you're watching this video you know exactly what i'm talking about um but that's that's an update for a couple weeks from now now, my 125. Uh, I did a landscaping, a hardscaping update. Here it is, the close-up. Basically what I did was I added in uh, the second flower pot to the, uh, or the fourth technically, to the tank. Now, a lot of people don't really like the flower pots. It's obviously not really the most natural look. And when you have a cichlid tank, it's very hard to go for a natural look because they rip apart everything. I'll go for a little close-up in a second as to what I really mean by that. But this tank gets rearranged easily. Sometimes I'll even see the fake plants I have in here uh, move around, which is crazy. I don't know how they move those plants because they have big rocks in the bottom of them. Uh, but that's the, the hardscape, you know, uh update here this is the new flower pot which actually the shovel mouth uh, the shovel nose really loves it um but he actually doesn't like the light anytime uh i have the light on in here the shovel nose he's actually not even a nocturnal fish the shovel nose always hangs out right up here i have to clean this glass it's getting kind of dirty 
Um, he always hangs out here. And he looks very stressed and, you know, maybe doesn't look right. He never actually eats when the lights are on. So actually every morning when the lights are off, I actually come down here and feed. And he is always active. I'm, I was really worried for like a week or two about him because, you know, I was, obviously I, he's my prized possession. But uh, he actually, he's fine. He, you know, he eats in the morning with the lights off. Um, I guess as he gets older, he will um, maybe get used to the light. But what I meant before about rearranging the tank, this pipe down here, he always digs this out. He digs out the gravel in the bottom here. And no matter what I do to this tank, you could actually see the glass on the bottom of the tank right there. He just enjoys being on, to, on the bottom of the glass, on the bottom of the tank. Um, he has little tiny caves everywhere around the tank. He has one there. He has another one on this side. He's, there's about three spots where he just lays on the grass, uh, on the glass. Um, I, as though that, that's actually not it for all the updates. I also added a wave maker in here. Now this is a Sun Sun, I don't know the, the numbers of it, but this is a Sun Sun wave maker. Uh, powerhead, whatever you want to call it. The I'm getting the glare from the 29 gallon there. The it has a dual head, and since I've added this, the fish are just extremely active. Now the way let me, I don't want to turn off the light because I don't want to stress out the fish. But the way that the if you could see my Jack Dempsey there, the way that the current blows. This look at that. Their, their fish are just so much more active now with that wave maker in it. And I, I, I've toyed with the idea of getting it for a while, and I've always said it's not necessary. Um, but with have, obviously the fish in this tank growing a little bit, and um, you know, I just wanted to try something new in this tank. I love this. The, the the fish are so much more active. You see the silver dollars um, swimming into the current. The Dempsey right there swimming into the current. All the fish love swimming into that current. And it's funny because it's actually the opposite as to the way it's blowing. Because I believe what happens is it blows off of the driftwood and back. Um, or maybe you put off some something over there. And they always love this little, this little wind tunnel. They just love swimming into it. Um, as the Jack Dempsey, look at those beautiful colors. I cannot wait until six months from now because, mark my words, this is going to look like a different fish. Look at the bl that beautiful blue color moving back on him. It's like every month he gets more and more blue scales that are just that beautiful color. He's going to look really great. Look at my haplos. So fun. I can literally talk about this tank for hours. I, this tank is just so much fun to me. It's just, there's so, the, the combination of fish in here right now is just... Perfect, but could get better. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, that's gonna be it for this tank. Now on to the twenty-nine gallon. Talking about fun. <sighs> now on to the gloom. This tank is is is. I, I don't know. Depressing. So. Uh, I <laughs> I added more uh, tiger barbs and you're saying to yourself well I only see four didn't you originally buy eight and you bought more I can't keep tiger barbs in this tank I really can't I, I can't keep schooling fish everything's dying everything's dying um it's just, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's the, um, the, the, it can't be the water. It's not the parameters. The fish, the, the, the gudgeon in there is good. The, uh, red tail shark in there is good. The gourami's been in there since day one. And is always hung, it's always hungry. No matter how much I feed, always active. And the cherry barbs, I'm now missing a ch one cherry barb. I've now lost a total of let me do some math, seven tiger barbs 
over the course of like a week. Uh, I started off with seven, uh, eight. Three died. Bought three. Like four more died afterwards, like significantly quickly afterwards. I don't know. Um, I think the next update on this tank might be just a complete stock change. Um, maybe keeping like one or two of the fish that I like in here. I don't even see my eel. He's alive. I saw him just yesterday, but before that I didn't see him for like four days. Um, it's just, I'm not liking this tank. I mean, if you know, leave your comments below what you think about this tank, what I should do with this tank. I, I don't know. I'm just at a loss of words. I want to keep the 29 gallon tank obviously running. Um, but I don't know about stock. Um, I just can't keep any schooling fish. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's two different batches. It's from a different, completely different place. And I got the silver dollars, which I've never lost one, but... I, know, I said in the beginning of this video, I don't want to make it a long video, but now it's become long, and now it's become depressing because I talked about the 29-gallon. Womp womp. But big things to come, guys, like always. Uh, stay tuned for more. Hopefully some guppies are born in that tank, some young ones, so they can grow up, be strong, so they can go into this tank. Heck, maybe I'll even put some of the fish in this tank, the 29 gallon, in my 125 to be eaten. Who knows? But that's it for today's video. Stay tuned for more. Be sure to like and subscribe. Peace!